Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Cyclone. It's time for our Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. We're going to go ahead and do the second scenario of the weekend, Cake Mix. And uh, this is going to be the second of the two that I do on Castle Rock Railroad using these uh, retired trains right now. There are others, but these are the ones we're going to do right now. I don't know if I have a lot of the Castle Rock ones, to be honest with you. But in any case, this one utilized the original 24057 pack version of the Santa Fe SD4A Type 2. I'm not making this up. You can look this up on the archive version of the RailWorks site from way back in the day. I could probably get you a link to it if you ask me. But uh, in the meantime, this is what we have to work with. So we're working with Cake Mix. We're running on Castle Rock Railroad. We're going to be running some grain hoppers from Monument and some frozen entrees and refrigerator cars from Larkspur. I think we have some coupling to do along the way, everyone. Uh, we're heading to Castle Rock with them. So let's get to work. We got some uh, transport to do. You will be taking seven hoppers from the granary to Larkspur, comma, where you will add two refrigerator cars. Then continue to Castle Rock Intermodal for the drop-off. Copy that. Bringing up the task list, we are going to couple some... Tr Wait a second. Where are, where's the trains we're coupling? Where are we... Oh, they're up there. Not any of that. Okay, so we're going to carry straight on forward. So we need a couple at Monument Granary 1. Where is Monument Granary 1? I just want to make sure that I have the exact location, even though it's pointing the arrow. Oh, we're a green train today. Well, that is fantastic. Uh, Monument Granary 1 is this batch of stuff here. So we're in gray and green today, apparently. That is not what I expected. I don't know why the colors are different on this scenario, but they are. I don't remember them being like this before. I really honestly don't. So what we're getting is over there. Um, wait, are our sidings correct? Our sidings are correct. We're connecting to this, which means we're going to eventually be back in U, which that was correct. And uh, all I have to do is deal with this in a moment. We are absolutely correct. So I'm going to make sure I come back to this point. For now, we go forward. We uh, do not have a timetable. That's the good news. So we're free to do this at our leisure. We're going to... We can also speed because there's no points involved. So I don't mind the fact that I sped a little bit. I also don't mind the fact that I seem to be losing... That I seem to not be getting any kind of... Uh, you know what? I'm just going to cheat here. I'm going to cheat... Let's just do that. We're going to have some fun with this today, guys. We're going to have some fun with this. We're far enough forward. I'm already set, set up to move backwards, so I can just sit right here. You're going to see the train start to move backward all of a sudden as it comes to a stop. And it's just going to sit there and move backwards. Perfect. This is how you set up a reversal, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's not legal. Don't do it. Uh, we're going backwards. I'm going to turn the headlights on. I should have done that before, but I did now. We're going to keep right on going until we connect to what we need to connect to. When you have an air brake loco, this is just another really weird way to cheat with uh, how you do things. And you get in trouble doing it. But you know what? It works. We're just going to back up really slowly. We're going to keep a nice little shot of the uh, reverser forward here. That way when we couple, we can just get the heck out of here. Without even having to think. We don't have to waste any of our brake power. Why not, right? What do you mean this isn't how you do it? You're right. Just leave it alone. Like, get in the cab and take a look at the uh, dials there. You can see our stuff is apparently where it should be. But in any, any case, we back up to the cars that are here. This is what we're going to take with us. Slight boost forward so we can... Lower our speed. It works nicely instead of using the air brakes. Why not? Other than the fact that I'll get in trouble later for doing this. So the connection should be complete in a moment. And there it is. 
The next part of the delivery is Larkspur. Continue there as signals allow. As signals allow. This may be interesting. We're going to leave it at 12 for now and see what we have up ahead for our pathing. Our pathing does have us going on to the main line. It looks like signals do allow because everything is clear. So uh, we're going to continue along. Take a quick peek over at the uh, signage over here. You see that little signage over there? Let's see what it says. Homework. Massive. 20% off. All in store. Homework. Kitchen. Bathrooms. Homewares. Tools. Garden. Mm, that actually looks... For the area this was built in, this actually looks pretty okay. I'm not going to complain about that for the age of this route. Like, yeah, today you could do a lot better, I guarantee you. But in the area this was built in, I'm not going to complain about this. So I'm up to 15 miles an hour. That will not hold. We do have an uphill that's going to be starting as we get into the 40. We're going to be climbing that hill with some vehicles. Uh, our next task, as you can see, is 12 miles away. 12 and a half miles to Larkspur Frozen Entrees. We're probably going to be routed off the main line into a siding somewhere. And then we're going to be uh, expected to pick up our cars and then wait for the signal to go back on the main line. Or it may just be automatic. We'll find out. So we have a red over green. That means we're going to move over to the right lane. You can hear the building to our left doing some work. As it's always doing, 24 hours on this route for some reason. And here is the track to the right that we're going to be taking. And we begin our journey once again on the Castle Rock Railroad. And the uphill has begun, so I'm going to go ahead and increase speed immediately. Yep, a level 1 throttle will not be enough here. So we're going to need to apply a level 2. Here we go under what I call uh, Monument Highway. I guess we can call it that. That works. Monument Road. Let's get this sucker up to speed. This thing is capable of climbing, that is for sure. With with uh, seven cars on its back, it is capable of climbing. I wouldn't want to see it with 67 cars on its back at this hill. 2.3% would be a torture for this train. I say that based on my experience with an ES44 AC on Sherman Hill at 1.5%. What is this out the window? Oh, a lot of rocks. Okay. So this is part of the Rockies, I take it. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Let's not overdo this. I'm taking the throttle off to zero. Actually, that's not going to work. I did take the throttle off to zero, but we were actually losing dramatic amounts of speed. So I'm holding a level two throttle for right now. And that's going to keep us at 39. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I mean, let's remember, we don't have a time limit. We do not have a time limit. We just have to pick up two cars and take off. What is that? Is that a fire? Oh, that's a motel. That's a cafe, rather. That is a diner. Sorry, not a not a cafe, a diner. That is some fictitious diner along some fictitious road going along the tracks in the Monument area. That is what it is. We would continue along this road if we were a vehicle. 
That is not a train, and we are now, you know what, that's enough of that. Let's just get back on the train. If we were a car, we would take that road. We are not, so we won't. Right now, I'm okay maintaining a 38 here. This is perfectly acceptable. Thirty-eight is a fantastic speed for an uphill. I mean, you can do a little bit better, but we'll take it. So you can see that we have a hidden task at Glen Park South too. I can say it's a hidden task because you can see it's not on our task list. Uh, with Larkspur being where we're going. But notice the uh, countdown distance marker. That's your indication that you have a hidden task here. And usually these types of hidden tasks are go via tasks. There's no other, any other kind of task, most of them pretty much. Uh, would require you to know that you actually have to do something there. Like if you're being told to stop, you better see a stop task. If you're being told to pick up passengers, you better see a pick up passengers task. But, uh, and there might be the odd exception where I saw a really good one on uh, Long Island Railroad where you basically took over a service mid-flight and you were actually explicitly told pick up passengers. So you expect to know, you expect, you're expected to know you're picking up passengers. And you're expected to know you have to wait, for example. Things like that are really neat. But uh, it in the average situation, you're not going to know that you're picking up passengers. You're not going to know that you're stopping. As a result, this kind of task, not important. Other kind of tasks usually are. We are coming to a downhill section. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease a little bit of speed knowing I'm going to increase on the downhill. I think I'm okay with that. So we're now on a 0.8% uphill gradient, I believe this is. I'm now getting into the 35, so I'm going to hold a level 1 throttle application for a moment so we don't lose too much speed. We're going to go ahead and continue on the downhill at this stage when we get to that side of the uh, little thing we're climbing. When we get to the peak. And now we are gaining speed, so let's go ahead and just drop that. We're on flat ground, so I don't need to hold the throttle on right now. I'm going to just coast at this 35 or 34.8 or 34.7, whatever this is. And we're going to continue. I don't really need to show you around the SD40 cab. It's the same as pretty much every other SD40 cab. The controls are in the same places. You don't expect anything different. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, enjoy a casual drive here. We do see a fully equipped something glazing on the uh, text on the wall. Maximum weight, I guess, is 393,000 pounds or something like that. So uh, there you go. If you have 393,000 pounds, get a helper engine is basically what it's telling you, I guess. I don't know. Thought I saw a slight amount of leg on the uh, on that. I'm actually not really gaining speed on this downhill. I do expect it will get a little steeper, so at some point I will start gaining some speed. Worth knowing, we have a 50 mile per hour section ahead, so this also is relevant to our to my. Uh, Thinking here, and indeed I am now gaining speed. Will I gain at a slow enough pace that I will reach the 50? This remains to be seen. Or re let me say that again. Reach the 50 without speeding. That remains to be seen. I have reached 60. I am now 7 tenths of a mile away from the speed limit modification.
Oh, this is really becoming a downhill now. Let's put some brakes on. Just a small brake application to hold things steady. I think I can keep that minimal brake on. I'll be okay. So I'm going to see if I can just power through that for my speed limit increase. This seems to be a good situation for me right now. I have control over this. So that's very good. I'm in a control situation right now, which I like. In fact, at this point, I can now reach 40 without a problem, knowing I'm not going to be speeding. That I can take it up to 50, which is my new speed limit as of right about now. I brought back down to a level one throttle. If I now hit the brakes, let's just check what happens here. I am indeed gonna lose some speed. So let's take it up to a 50 right now, or at least a 49. Then I'll take a look at the map and I'll see. Oh, hello. Did you see who that was? Notice another engine on the back of that one. So we are losing a little bit of speed now. This is fine. The gradient has um, decreased. That's why our brakes are having more of an effect with a low throttle. So as the ground goes flat, that throttle will indeed have a um, stronger need to be applied. Let's just say it that way. Quick peek at the map to see where it is we're going. We're going to be going to not my train right now. We're going to be going here. So we're going to be coupling two cars in this area where another car is coming through. We're going to be coupling on uh, the Larkspur Frozen Entries track to the left. That's where we're coupling. So we're going to have to get in here into the platform and we're going to have to back up. And then we're going to honk at some future passengers of our F7 when we bring the F7 through here. And then we will carry on about our day. That's basically it. And yeah, that's right. I still haven't done the F7 scenarios on this or on Cahun Pass. So we are going to eventually run the F7 because I've got a lot of potential F7s on uh, this and on, um, let's not speed, on this and on Feather River Canyon. I have a lot of potential F7s to show off. Lots of repaints I've been finding and I found some CN ones. So I really want to kind of go uh, Canadian here and have and rent a CN one down in California. Why not? Or in Colorado would make more sense, I guess. Want to rent one of those in uh, Colorado and, uh, you know, it's skinned, it's skinned on the F7 that comes with um, Feather River Canyon, so it actually have the air braking functionality too, which would, again, give a little bit of a change for this route that this route didn't have. Scenarios, again, not tested for it, but who cares? We can still play it. I have been uh, running my last couple sessions recording, including this one, using the full screen setup because uh, I had been doing that with SimRail. And I decided to see how it works with this game. You may have noticed in the past, in the previous video yesterday, uh, the screenshot button showed up. So you were able to actually see that I took a screenshot instead of just hearing the noise. So I can see where that has its benefits. I've turned off all the chat, all the game starting alerts that show up inside of here. So you're not seeing any of that. Nothing is coming through. The only thing that would come through is some kind of chat room notification or something like that. I don't know even know what exactly what that is, to be honest with you. But it never happens. So unless it ever happens, I'm never going to have to worry about that. I noticed the recording quality didn't change in the last uh, video either. Now, I do know that when I was recording SimRail, I did have several maps going in a browser at one point. 
and I didn't realize that. I even restarted the browser and had the browser going again with the map still running. And I still couldn't figure out why my computer was having problems keeping up with uh, the quality of the recording. But uh, I later figured out after that recording, hey, guess what, you dum-dum? Yeah, that's what. So I've got all those maps off now. My computer memory is back to normal. And I should be getting good recording. Hopefully the next SimRail video will be a lot smoother for you as well. Uh, what I can tell you is that the videos I'm recording right now, I'm recording in advance because I know I'm going to be gone on uh, the days that these videos come out. Or at least I'm going to be coming home uh, probably on the either on the Friday or the Saturday. I'll be coming home on one of these two days. Uh, but I'm going to be gone for at least a couple days. The only change to that will be if the weather becomes a factor. We are supposed to get some snow around that time. And it's supposed to be a fair amount that could hinder my travel. So if it does, I'm going to be staying home and I'm not going anywhere for the week. But um, we'll see what happens. I may be here. I may not during the week. But at the very least, I've got some stuff recorded. I know the next video I want to do is going to be hopefully another SimRail video. But um, I do know that we are going to have a new uh, item coming out. I want to look at that as well. So there's an SD40, some coal freight cars it looks like. And... Going to go ahead and let the brake take full effect now because we have a 40 coming up. So we're going to take advantage of that. Take advantage might not be the phrasing I should be using there. We just saw the warning, by the way, for the 40 a second ago there. We have a flashing yellow. We're going to be changing lines here. So I'm going to apply a throttle application now. We brought our speed down just a little too early, so we still have a little speed we can take advantage of. But we're not going to blow it too much here. In fact, I'm not even gaining speed, so I might as well just drop the last little bit and go with it. Makes sense, right? Yeah, let's just bring it down the last little bit and we're going to go with it. There we go. I'm under 40. We are going to continue at under 40. And it looks like the gradient has uh, smoothed just a wee bit more here. So I will have to monitor my speed in that, in light of that, I should say. I'm starting to believe as we get to mile marker 12, I think it's about 25 miles long, if I remember correctly. I have to remember that we are going to be coming up to our first stop soon. It was about 12 and a half miles away from where we started. And the first mile is pretty much from the buffer. So there is Larkspur South 2. We are being destined or directed into Larkspur South 2. That is our platform. I don't know what the speed is coming off of the uh, junction there, so I'm kind of letting the... I'm trying to let the brakes come on a bit, but they're not doing very much on this downhill, so I'm going to actually go ahead and, you know, cheat. I mean, a real locomotive would probably get put you in a uh, very unfortunate situation if you did what I'm doing right now, but we're going to take it. By the way, you want to hear the bell? There you go. Oh, we have a bit of a disjointed track there, it looks like. Okay, I don't know what the speed limit is in this area, but I'm going to bring it down a little just to be sure. We 
we have a red over green line change. I'm down to around 20. We can actually change lines safely at 40, it looks like. We are now acceptable for 20. What is that? Oh, that's the frozen entrees consist. Okay, excellent, excellent. So I should be at a good speed limit now. Let's go with that. The line does not end up here. It just continues. So, um... At this point, I'm going to let the brakes do their thing, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure my entire train is in here first. Otherwise, it's going to be a little unfortunate. So watch the back of the train. I'm holding a little bit of throttle so the brakes don't take full effect. I'm now going to let the brakes take more effect. A wee bit more, and then I'm going to go ahead and take the... Uh... Okay, let's see if that works. Where are we? We're right here. We, oh, you know what? It's going to happen on its own. We're just going to keep right on going. It happens on its own. That's all I need to know. I don't even worry about it because it happens on its own. I'm now connected for the uh, cars behind me. I'm going to put this into reverse. We're going to honk at the people because why not? I don't want to do that. That's way too much speed. That's way too much speed. Let's turn around. So now we're going through the Larkspur area. Having a slight speed reduction at this point, which is perfect. You can see some boxcars sitting there uh, on the uh, paved area. Those will get loaded on the trains. That's what they look like when they're not on the trains. We took another mile off our uh, speed there. I'm going to drop another couple. Before we couple. There we go. So if we turn, we're going to see that there's a small amount of room before the buffer. That is fine. I'm okay with that. So let's couple up right now. We're going to try and bring the train to a very quick stop. When we couple, like this. Perfect. You can now head to Cost Rock Intermodal Yard for the final drop off. Copy that. So, back in the cab, we're going to go ahead and leave this brake on because having a running brake is not a bad thing in this kind of train. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, lollygag out the window. We're now under a 15, so I was right that we were going to be getting a speed limit change anyway. We are at a 15 at this time. So I've given him a couple toots. Uh, that girl looks very... Wow. What? Okay, I guess that's normal. Wait a second. That is next to a track. Okay, that's a cage. It's a cage. Never mind. I thought it was a track. It's a cage. Some kind of a cage. We're going uh, 15. Going to be moving up to 40. Let's take the bell off. We should have. We probably had signal clearance. I don't. I wasn't paying full attention, but it looks like we are signal clear. We are proceeding into the Castle Rock area, which is to the north. What's our final destination? Right there. Right there. Let's get this thing up to speed. Now, I do remember that track is a slow entry, so we're going to have a nice long slog at 15 miles per hour unless we choose to speed it up, which is the irresponsible thing to do, hence why it's fun. Gotta be responsible once in a while, right? 
Gotta have a little fun. Make the boss fret. Get him to offer you some biscuits with some tea. Oh wait, this is not the UK. No, they don't give you biscuits. They don't even give you the tea. Lucky if you get a glass of water with it. So we're going to go ahead and boost the throttle up. Like I said, I'm going to leave the uh, running brake application on because it comes in very handy when you're on a downhill, as we are now. But it's not going to have much help for us on a 0.4% gradient. So it's actually counting against us, counteracting against us. If we come to an uphill, I'm going to be releasing that brake, to say the very least. There'll be no point to me having that brake on on an, an uphill. It's been a while since I've been here, so I don't remember the exact layout and gradients of the track. Ooh. Another road. Can we call that the Larkspur Highway, or is that the same highway that goes by Monument and... I don't know. I haven't really checked the scenic highways to see if they're the same ones or not, but that is quite a turn there, wasn't it? That was quite a... Let's actually go back. Look at the turn there. That is quite a turn. You can see the highway coming in, and then it actually does continue to go south, and it does head off in that direction somewhere, so it does split from the track. And I went far enough from my train that I had to redraw the uh, assets. That's a good way to... Good way to crash the sim in a very busy route. Thankfully, this is not a very busy route. Still looking forward to the uh, core updates. I mean, it's coming into February now, so I'm looking very much forward to those uh, core updates. Uh, I don't remember if they set a date for them or if, the, if it was going to be March, April, May, June. I don't know if they set a date yet offhand. And I imagine anything you do with these updates is very, very closely sealed. Anyone who has anything to do with the updates is not saying much, and anyone who's possibly testing the updates is not saying much. I mean, I wouldn't. But I do have some routes in mind to try once we know if, they're, if the updates are any good. I have some roots in mind. I also need to revisit um, the Leipzig area, so I'm kind of I'm gonna try to hold on to the Leipzig to Dresden scenarios that remain, because I'm already planning to revisit the Leipzig area with the better graphic quality to see if I can actually run it on high graphics. I would love to see if that's the case now. I really want to know. Science demands answers. So you can see I'm gaining speed very slowly at this point with my 23% brake application. I probably could take it off. I'd be a lot better off. But again, I don't have a time limit. Why do I care? We're just going to do the slow increase. We're going to take it and we're going to enjoy it. The problem is this is at 100% throttle. That's the problem. We're at mile marker 15. If you want to get an idea how fast that is, or how far along the road that is, here's where we are. If we zoom out, you can see that we are on the just centering the northern part of the map right now. In fact, the southern end. Hello. Who are you? Ah, container freight. So the uh, southern end of the map is uh, out of the view that I when I was zoomed out, while the northern end was fully in the view. So we are slightly into the northern end of the map now. So 15 is in the north side. I think it was 25 miles or so. I think I said that earlier. I think it's about 25 miles. So... Um, Based on that, and the fact we've been going this whole time, we probably have about nine miles to go. We are in a 55, currently going about 51, which is all right. We're gonna take a little bit of throttle off, whoops, a little bit of throttle off, see what happens here. We are still gaining, and the downhill has actually started again, so I need to watch it. The downhill has returned. 0.9% gradient, I'm easing it down to, trying to ease it down to about 50%. Might be a good level. 
Definitely a good level. I seem to be holding. We have a straight green signal. This signal provides no alternate routes. There are no connection tracks here. What's going on out this side? Uh, oh, there's another track here either. No, we're good. We're good. I like this view. I do not mind this. This is acceptable. This is very acceptable. Eight miles to go to our final stop at Castle Rock or Castle Rock intermodal load unload yard whatever you want to call it it's called the load unload so i guess it's the uh, place where trains come in and trains go out they lose their dressage or they gain their dressage i'll let you figure out how to say it we are slowly gaining speed here just a wee bit 53.4 is now our speed. We are now on a 1.1% downhill gradient. That's why we're gaining speed. So I'm going to bump it back to a 37 at this point. And we are doing fantastic now at that. This is indeed the hold point I was envisioning. And I have no objection to that. Coming up on seven miles to go to our stop. And I kind of don't want to lose this view as we get to see the emergency brake valve door. I mean, let's go back to the cab for a second. If we go over here... Oh, and actually just the emergency brake valve. The door is in front, and the door does not open, by the way. There's nothing opening that door. So there's no door open. So, okay, we're going to stay on the inside. Because we have a right turn here. Which we can see better from this window. Therefore, we're using this window. Fifty-three point one is now our speed. We're at mile marker eighteen. We are six and a half miles to go to our final uh, stop here. Fifty-three miles per hour, even green signals continuing. So just to reiterate, I do want to try and find something similar to do here. I don't know if it's going to be a look at the new signal box that came out just, um, was it yesterday? I been yesterday. Uh, no, no, not yesterday. Sorry. Yesterday as I'm recording this, maybe I might be a little uh, behind on saying this. No, it was, it was last week. I should say last week. It's the signal box that came out last week. I think it came out on Sunday. Why was it yesterday? I have no idea, but, um, I think it was Sunday that we got access to it or something like that. I haven't actually been in there at the time I'm recording this. I do want to try and take a quick look before I record it. So uh, I will be um, seeing if I can take a look at that. I have been in Zavierci. Zavierci is a fantastic signal box to play with. Uh, I have no objection to that one. It works very nicely for me. The only potential problem I could have with it is the fact that uh, some of the trains on the computer are not the correct trains coming through the station. And I heard that complaint about the new one at DGW as well. The same complaint came up. But there is a major, major problem as of my recording this that has uh, been uh, the little problem in that track. Major, major problem in this since I, um, as I'm recording this, that really is causing chaos in the game. And that is the fact that Beijing is uh, getting kicked every time someone joins either of its neighboring dispatchers. You thought I was going to talk about Sosnoviak Poludnyuvi, didn't you? That's what you thought I was going to talk about. That's next. Um, since this uh, came up as being a major problem heading southbound and eastbound, I actually noticed in my last play session that a train got moved into a siding. They opened up a siding to ease congestion. I don't know why they don't fix the AI, but um, they opened up a siding and they made the AI use it, apparently. I, I don't know. What would happen if three trains showed up one after another? There would still be a block. 
It doesn't solve the problem. I don't... Fifty is our new speed limit coming up. Also, the problem that we've been noticing is that the line between Polonyuvi and Dendovka, the, the Sosnovia Dendovka, um, it's been plugged up. I think we conclude that there was a track that was not getting used for trains, so I think um, the just the developers opened up that track because we because we noticed that track not being used during our play session. We actually had a really, really, we, like, we have someone who keeps all the data for the game. And uh, he does some really nice animation images whenever things go wrong. He's a, he looks at the data and says, okay, I can plot this. And he puts out a nice animated image. And the session that I was taking part in, or at least not the one that I was taking part in, this was on a German server. So a session I was watching on a German server, I was reporting all this data for. And uh, after he was got word of the fact that I had posted all this data for it. He was able to pinpoint the exact session, the exact information to plot. And uh, I noticed there were two trains that got moved in right at the start of the session that I missed. Um, Cause they were already there when I arrived. So he had the animation of everything in that session. And I will tell you this, those animations of trains coming in, they are fun to watch. I enjoy watching those animations. Because you just see the trains pop again. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, here's where the plug occurred. There, see, when this train comes in, that's, that's you just can figure out how things are going wrong as you watch the animation. It really is fun to watch those uh, little animation things he comes up with. Nothing to do with Train Simulator, obviously, but... Uh, It is interesting being part of that play community as well, being having been in the play test and now being in the um, early access. It is fun being able to track the data. I'm not going to slow down time, am I? It's fun being able to track the uh, progress of the game and see how that game is going to proceed. Um, it's actually kind of funny as well. Though I actually was uh, playing a game and uh, I noticed uh, Matt Peddles and himself coming through. I shouldn't really advertise that too much, I don't think, but... I saw him coming through, and there's nothing wrong with him coming through. Um, he picked up the game like anyone else. He's allowed to. He's a play. He plays games too, so he's allowed to do that. And it actually kind of serves in a way to compare the uh, competitive games, the competition games here as well. So definitely no problem with doing that. As we're starting to get close to our destination, we are two miles away. We're going to get slowed down soon, I think. So I'm just going to start slowing down right now. So he's allowed to check things out as well. He's allowed to play things as a regular player as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Is this the turn we're taking? That is the turn we're taking. And 40 is our allowed speed on it. Okay, cool. Cool. We are just going to cruise right along here. We are cruising right along here. I thought we were going to run that double red. I was wondering why we were given the access there. But no, the signal right beyond was the double red. What is this? Is this the Castle Rock Station? Is that an F... Is that an F7? It is the Castle Rock Station. Is that an F7? That's the Southern Pacific. Look at that beauty. Look at that thing. I've never seen that. Let's get some power on this train. I've never seen that before. So yeah, I, I remember uh, pathing him through, pathing Matt through, and I was working Sosnovia Glufti at the time, and uh, he gives his, uh, the normal voice mic message that you would expect to hear from someone who's using the mic saying, yep, okay, departing. And I literally heard someone say on the, on the cam, on the mic, somewhere else, oh, that's Matt Pedelson. So uh, people have noticed that he's playing the game people have noticed but it's not going to be a case where he's in the game all the time he's very very busy with train sim world he just checks out games like this once in a while to see what they're doing and i'm i guarantee you he's going to show up again at least a couple times to see how the game's progressing because as a fellow developer he's curious to see what other developers are doing and there's nothing wrong with that it's not necessarily a competitive thing it's just see what they're doing see what's see what's different get some ideas for their own game and that is perfectly okay. I certainly support 
uh, Matt taking part in other games like that. Not a problem. So there are going to be people who might be like, well, why would he do that? That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And I'm going to continue playing the DTG games, and I'm sure I'll see him in uh, Sosnoviak Lufni or somewhere else again. I have to admit, the dispatching is fun. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, the dispatching is fun. It can get boring at times when no one's around or when there's no humans online driving the trains, but it can be fun. It really can be, and I enjoy doing it. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about Simrail, if you have played it or not. I thought we were going to have a 15 before now. I've been driving slowly because I expected to have a 15. Uh, we have not had a 15 yet. I actually want to know what's going on here. So I'm going to check the map. And... Oh yeah, we're going to the north track. So yeah, we're going to stay fast. Sorry. The 15 track is this one. This is the 15 track right here. So we are on a much, much different path. We still have a ways to go. I could probably put a little more speed on for right now and then bring it back down. So I'm going to put a little more speed on, then I'll bring it back down. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm at a 20. This is acceptable. And I'm going to see up ahead. Yep, there is a 15. I can put up speed until we get there. So we're going to put some speed back on. Now, you may remember that I said I wanted to get some Train Sim World and get the Edinburgh Glasgow going. That was not going to happen this weekend. There was no way in heck that was going to happen. I already knew that. I was hopeful. But I do want to play. I do I do have an interest in uh, Rivets Root. I want to see what they've done differently. I don't think the Falkirk High Branch is going to be there. I don't think it's going to go all the way to Larkspur. I think it is going to be just Edinburgh to Glasgow. But... That's what's on the tin. I mean, if that's what you're getting, that's if that's what's on the tin, that's what you expect. So uh, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't necessarily need to have anything else. It would be nice to have a little bit of extra track there because the original route did, and it's the same company theoretically. Uh, part of it, anyway. Part the part of the company is the same part of the same original company, the one that's now doing it. They were part of it. So it'd be nice to have uh, the full route, but if it's only the main route, then so be it. So be it. As long as you get what's on the tin, that's all that matters. And I think there's going to be a lot of people happy to drive a 385, even if the route is shorter than it was in the past, even if you don't have the um, extra sections for freight traffic and so on. I think people will still be happy with it just because they're going to get the uh, Scottish route. They're going to get the uh, new train to drive. And it'll show up in livery designer, I'm sure, to be used on another route or two here and there, wherever it fits. I'm sure it will happen. So yeah, it'll be fun to see that route. Wait a second, where am I going? I just realized I'm on the wrong path. I need to go over there. Stop, 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 stop. Let's not go this way. Let's not go this way. Thank you. Okay, let's get this break off. We're going to go ahead and do this properly now. We're going to move backwards. Because I went a wee bit too far, ladies and gentlemen. It's what I get for not paying attention to my roots. Thankfully, we don't have a timer on it. That thing up ahead is uh, irrelevant, but as you can see, that's the station I need to pull into right there. And I'm not pulling into that. That's exactly where I need to go, right there. I'm not there. I'm just, I was positioned instead to head back onto the main line, which is not what I want to do. So let's see where we're going. We're, um, aside you. That's where I need to go off. So a little bit further back, please. I don't know if I have a signal back here, but I don't care right now if I have a signal back here. I really don't. I really don't care. Okay, that's enough. Back to the front. No, I expected to be junctioned off the uh, track again. I wasn't expecting to have to set that one myself. 
So, uh, and it is one I have to set myself. You can see the switch right over there on the, uh, next to the first car that's now coming back into that area. Second car. Second car. It's in front of the speed limit sign, which is next to the fourth car. So that's the point I need to work with. So that is the switch. I'm not ready to hit it yet. I can't hit it yet. And you can't see my mouse, I don't believe. So it's kind of hanging out in a situation where it's going to hit the switch as soon as it can. And now we're at as soon as it can. So it should... There it goes. So forward we go. Forward we go. Thank you. We are now going to the load unload, which is exactly where we should be going. So we're going to go ahead and continue forward. We're going to bring the train to a stop with another 23% brake application. In fact, I'll put that brake application on now that I'm going to go ahead and increase speed again. That way my brakes are already set. I uh, know what I'm working with coming in, and I'll bring the train to a stop as I see fit. So entering the load unload, we're go I got caught off guard there. That was my fault. I will grant that I made a mistake there, but we corrected the mistake, and we're now in the correct stopping area. Also, if you were to look beyond this point, you can see again, this uh, track does return to the main line and the main line just continues off into the netherworld. Not where we're gonna go. You can actually see the buffer up ahead because like I said, that's the netherworld. I don't know if we're gonna be able to change the zoom to get rid of the uh, buffer at this point, but that would be nice. Nope, we can't get rid of the buffer, apparently. The end of track indicator remains. OP. OP. Okay, since this is the load unload area, I think the best thing for me to do is stop the engine right inside this... Uh, right. So the first car is right there. The first car is exactly where I want to leave it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that first car in the engine unload area. Because why not? Alright. I'll let you guys sort this one out. We're finished our job. Let's look at the train. At some point, this uh, unloading machine will get to work and take these cars off, but uh, that will be something that we don't see. So those cars are going to get taken off, and this train is going to be... Um, I don't know what happens to it, but in any case, isn't this a nice loco? I actually don't mind this loco. Uh, this is a nice loco. I'm looking forward to doing Arizona Divide with this thing, even if I do fall asleep here in that route sometimes. Great job. This food stuff will be unloaded here and shipped around the region by road. By the way, one more thing. If you have the Santa Fe Loco and the Arizona Divide route, and you're a worldwide user who bought it before the BNSF uh, situation was resolved, go and uncheck the world assets and check the U.S. assets. You can get that Santa Fe Loco logo on there. If you've already applied the rest of the world lo uh, livery with the uh, patch to that, you do what you wish. But the logo is now in there. You can now put that in there yourself with the uh, actual from actually from Steam without needing a mod. In any case, that's the end of the stereo. I will see you next time, probably for some like I said for some sim rail, and then we'll see what I do after that. I haven't decided. It's probably going to be the new route because I think we're going to have a new route on. Uh, I'm guessing Thursday or Friday because those are typical release dates. So we might have a new route next week, from what I've heard. I don't have a lot of information on it, on it yet, but I'll tell you more probably when we do sim rail. I'll probably have it by then. In any case, have yourself a wonderful day, evening, or night. I'm Cyclone. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.